Hi, I'm Kat. And I'm Stuart. And this is Nala. And we are Van Navigation. You'll normally find us living in the mountains of South Wales in our self-converted Mercedes Sprinter. But we've just embarked on an epic road trip from the UK through Belgium, France, Spain and onwards to Morocco. Subscribe and follow along on this massive journey. You want a quiet night out? Come to Chamonix on New Year's Eve. I've seen busier nights in a Cardiff on a Friday night. <laughs> but we're here, so we Happy are. New Year to you all. There's whiskey There's in there. There's whiskey that. in here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lovely atmosphere. People are really friendly. It's very snowy. We just had a half French, half English broken conversation with a group of ladies about the dog. <laughs> so it's all good. I think we found the people. We've about a minute to go and it's starting to kick off. <laughs> yeah, tell me you're in France, no, tell me you're in France. Firecrackers everywhere. Here we go. Less than a minute to go. First sign of fireworks and everybody runs up the road. And I think we've finished already. Wait for it. Oh, that's a let down. And so 2024 begins. I love it. It's absolutely <laughs> mad. We were led to believe by some people we'd spoken to there'd be a big fireworks display. I think it's actually every hotel doing their own fireworks display, so it's very difficult knowing which way to look. And people letting fireworks off in the streets as well. Yeah, we're in France, <laughs> there's firecrackers everywhere, <laughs> but uh, it's been a good night. Uh, the dogs behaved impeccably. Yeah. We're going to head back to the van now and let Nala play in the snow a little bit more before we get there. Uh, and I think we'll call it a night, ready for uh, leaving the Alps tomorrow, heading for, towards the Pyrenees. A very happy new year to you all. Happy new year. Good morning from a very sunny and very snowy Chamonix. We had a very, very late night last night. We were awake till about 3 a.m. listening to and watching the fireworks. They certainly know how to do New Year here with a bang. Um, finally crashed into bed at about 3. And then uh, at about 6 o'clock this morning, I woke up thinking World War III had broken out. All I could hear was helicopters and explosions. Uh, I was lying in bed and uh, it bangs that were making the whole van shudder and I'm thinking well that's not fireworks surely it wasn't quite light but um, I was thinking that they, those fireworks can't have gone on all night and anyway they continued and they continued for a good couple of hours and uh, I think it was controlled avalanche uh, explosions because the helicopters were out for hours lots of big booms and then uh, echoes through the valley so nobody's had very much sleep and uh, we're leaving Chamonix today so it's going to be a, a bit of a long drive to the next location I think we're heading for the Ardèche area today so uh, it looks very pretty down there looking on Google Maps and we're slowly meandering towards Spain little view out the van door this morning
Our time in Chamonix has come to an end and as we take the scenic drive out of town I can only hope that all the stop-offs on this trip will be as hard to leave as this one is. Chamonix, you've been beautiful. We just pulled over alongside this gorge to uh, cool the brakes down a little bit. It's, uh, it's very windy this road is. We've gone over the top of the mountain through a few ski resorts and now back down the other side. Uh, Stuart's just messing around with the uh, FEMA awning, which we wound in yesterday, but it was so full of ice that uh, I don't think it's sitting quite right. So we'll hopefully we'll sort that out now and then we'll be on our way again. Us before we came. Oh, we're gonna eat so healthy on our road trip. Us today. Forever Rochers for lunch, darling. Well, after that road, lunch is calling, so we've stopped off. Get a load of this view. But a few people ask us why we're taking the, the non-toll roads. Partly it's to do with money, but uh, the roads that we've been on, they've just left me speechless. And you get views like this wherever you go. Why would you want to pay money to avoid these? Well, we're just driving along through the mountains and uh, we spotted an air. So Van Life Essentials, fill up with water. Uh, Unfortunately, these are the push button style, whereas I normally pump mine in from a tap. Um, but I do carry 20 litre water containers. So we're having to fill the water containers up and then pump it in. You see there, I've got a simple 12 volt pump connected to a hose pipe, goes into the bottom of the van, and I just refill these containers uh, and pump it in. So we should be good for a few days now. I can hold 120 litres in the main tank, uh, plus these two, so we should be good for a good 10 days plus now. Uh, there's also a toilet empty in place, which is always handy. And uh, the view is pretty good too. Good morning. Another morning, another lovely parker. Here we are just behind us. Again, we turned up quite late last night. It was a bit dark to be able to see. But we're here alongside uh, the River Rhone. It's absolutely lovely. I saw a kingfisher, tried to take a photo, but didn't quite get the uh, focus in time. Flighty little things, aren't they? It's absolutely lovely here. Completely deserted spot, bit of road noise, which you can probably hear in the background. Uh, we drove all day yesterday in brilliant, beautiful sunshine. So we decided we're gonna to stop today and do some walking, but it's, uh, it's absolutely hammered down all night and it's looking a bit gray and dreary today, but you take what you get, I guess woken up in an absolutely lovely park up. We're quite good at this. Good job really as we live on the road. Well, we've just been to the Intermarché, done the whole French shopping experience. Um, I think everybody in France run out of Christmas food today because it was absolutely heaving in, the, in here. Big thumbs up to everyone in Britain who knows how to queue because no one else does. <laughs> that was wild. All done. Oh. I would give thumbs up, <laughs> but in her eagerness to get the sweets, she stuck a nail in my thumb and it's bleeding! Oh, he's such a drama queen, honestly. <laughs> Listen to him. Anyway, we're in the Ardash region and we're off for a walk today. Had to stop here and enjoy the view. It's absolutely stunning. Also gives me a, a bit of a break. These roads are hard going. Be great in a little car, but in a three and a half ton motorhome, they're pretty windy. Uh, as evidenced here, somebody's obviously got out because they weren't feeling too well. And been sick. Lovely, beautiful place though. By now, I'm used to French drivers sitting on my bumper, so whenever I get the chance, I pull in and let them by. After all, if I had a nice car, I'd have my foot down too. And here we are in this tiny medieval village in the Ardèche region. And even here, as small as it is, with its tight streets, we have a large parking area. And see that behind us? Recycling bins, rubbish bins, and uh, points to get rid of things. Britain, take note. <laughs> Everything really is so convenient here. And uh, have a little look right now. My little inner architecture nerd is squealing with excitement. Yeah. 
having now consulted the map, the little village we're in is called Vogue. Vogue. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, I'll have a little look around now. I'm no Madonna, am I? Let's be honest. Le Chateau on Vogue. It certainly is on Vogue. Look at it. The castle is the property of one of the great families who influenced the history of this area. And although it, re it retains vestiges of its construction during the 12th and 15th century, in the 17th century, most of the alterations and additions that you see today were built. It's closed at the moment. It's only open from April to October. But uh, yeah, what a grand old building. Overlooking the gorge here beneath us. And whilst walking this maze of 12th century alleyways, we soon hit a dead end. I think we can assume people were a little shorter during the medieval period. All over the same size of little Welsh women. <laughs> We finally found our way down to the Ardèche River, where we found the remains of a wheat mill built in 1458. A dike on the Ardèche led water to a wooden wheel which was swept away with part of the mill by a very strong flood in 1890. The millstone has since been recovered and placed on the side of the remains with a plaque, thanks in part to the Society of Protection of Ancient Monuments of the Ardèche. There's something to be said about coming out of holiday season. We've got a place to ourselves near us, damn it. Nothing's open, but the peace and tranquility of a place like this is absolutely mind blowing. It is deserted and it's beautiful. And an amazing architecture here. Sorry, darling, no diving here. Oh, darn. She's just going to jump in as well. It's been a beautiful couple of hours walking around Vogue. It's a really lovely uh, village, absolutely gorgeous. The architecture's to die for. We're, uh, we're driving about half an hour down the uh, Ardèche now, and we're going to look for a little place called La Pont d'Arc, which I think is just the arc arch bridge, um, which is a natural arch that spans the river down here. It's a little gorge area. So we're going to have a little walk around there where the dog will be able to have a little bit more freedom than she's got here as well. Take a look at some of the natural beauties this area has to offer before we move on a little further towards the Spanish border. As you can probably hear from the squeaking by the side of me, Nala now has the drone in her sights and she's not very happy about it. We have to hide out in the van when uh, Stu is using the drone because Nala thinks it's a little bumblebee that needs swatting out of the air. <laughs> Road. Here we are, Le Ponte Arc. Plenty of big parking spaces for motorhomes and coaches. A couple of car parks, although I suspect that this place would be absolutely heaving in dry season. As you probably saw on the footage driving in, very narrow roads with uh, rocky overhangs. So uh, you might wanna be careful of that in bigger vehicles. But there is a bus stop, so buses get down here. 
I uh, think uh, I the think main car park I can see now is a 1.9 meter height restriction. Uh, one of the barriers is open at the moment, but peak season you don't know, so you take your chances. We're parked in the coach space, so it does say uh, paying, but we can't see any paying machines, so we're just going to risk it for a biscuit. <laughs> Let's go for a walk. It is January after all. Um, I saw on the Google reviews that if you park in town, there is a free shuttle bus down here in the summer. I suspect that would be a, a much more sensible action in high season. And uh, I can see the arch now. I'll, uh, I'll wait until we get a bit closer to show you. The arch itself is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's easy to see why. They found cave drawings here from over 36,000 years old. Unreal. I think this is about as far as we're going to go without getting wet. And quite frankly, today, I don't fancy getting wet. Kath said she's going to put a swimming costume and go for a swim, didn't you, darling? No, not today. Though it does look lovely. I really wish the sun had been out because I would have been straight in there. <laughs> We enjoy the peace and tranquility of out of season. Nala has her own ideas. Well, we didn't find any cave drawings. Well, what a stunning place. If the sun was shining, it'd be an epic place to go swimming. It'd also be heaving, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, I suspect it would be. There we go, onwards to the Pyrenees. Just making our second detour. Uh, not bad really, two in 1200 miles, just our second detour of the trip now because we've come across another low bridge. Um, it's well worth keeping an eye on the signs so if your sat nav doesn't uh, specifically measure the height of your vehicle and you're in a high top van like we are, that one was 2.2 meters which is uh, way too low for us unfortunately and uh, yeah there does seem to be a few low bridges in front so it's just worth keeping an eye on that I think if you're traveling through these areas. So far this trip, we've done over 1,250 miles on mainly A and B roads, but this, the D25 to San Etienne de Gorgas, has to be my favourite. It's the sort of road I'd happily drive all the way back to in a proper sports car, just to do it again. We gained some serious elevation in just a few kilometres, part of me was glad it was dark for the sheer drops on one side. from a Saint Etienne de something or other. A little park up we found a park for night. It was a fun road in last night as you've seen uh, in the clip before this. It's a nice park up, recycling points if you've got cardboard, nothing else. Uh, reasonably quiet apart from the church bell going every half hour and the tractor going from about eight o'clock this morning. But uh, absolutely stunning. Uh, I'm not sure which one of these two mountains uh, we went over last night. But, uh, it was good fun. Morning coffee done and we're just back on the road. Uh, so you know what they say, don't you? Expectation is the root of all disappointments. Uh, we find when we're traveling, it's best not to have too many expectations and not to have our fat plans too fixed and then we're not too disappointed when they have to change. Uh, we're heading towards the Spanish border today. The plan was, was always to uh, go over the Pyrenees, enjoy some of the views. We have some spots marked in the Pyrenees. We were planning to stay overnight and explore some places there. Uh, but unfortunately, looking at the weather reports, the Pyrenees is nothing but 
torrential rain for the next few days. Um, I don't know about you, but doing zigzags and switchbacks and long hilly roads up in the clouds while it's pouring with rain is not the fun we were looking for. So we've switched up our plans and we're going to head to, down towards the coast and hug the coast, go over the Spanish border, and the plan is to end the day in Lorette de Mar. My job today, while Stuart is driving, is to start looking for some vets so that we can um, find a vet who's going to be sympathetic to post-Brexit bureaucracy and hopefully we'll do our blood tests and things today and get them taken ready for us to cross into Morocco and issue us with a pet passport and do all of it without too much distress to our lovely dog who uh, has been the most fantastic travelling companion so far this trip. So better travel than most humans this one is now. We're also hoping that Spain has less speed bumps. <laughs> Need to be a mountaineering expert to get over some of the speed bumps we've been over in France. It's ridiculous. I've never known anything like it. Yes. All good fun, eh? Some of them are a bit sharp, especially with a long van. Um, yes, you might have gone over one a little bit fast yesterday and dislodged everything in the boot, which meant it all Definitely fell didn't. <laughs> it all fell out. I mean, funny opened the back door. Yeah. So as our regular followers will know, uh, the whole drama of this trip has been sorting the dog out because the paperwork now has to be done in the EU. I'm not going to go on and on about this because I've made a dedicated video to this, so we'll link up to that in this video. Uh, so this morning I've spent the morning writing out emails to vets, translating translating them into Spanish just so we don't look like entitled English tourists and uh, emailing vets to find one who can do what we need doing. Um, the first vet has responded with um, a little bit of misinformation and um, I mean something we've discovered from doing this for the UK is vets aren't up on all these travel rules at all so please do not rely on your own vet for information on traveling do your own research because uh, it's not their area of expertise um, so we didn't think we were going to get much luck with that vet but a second vet has just emailed um, in perfect English <laughs> which is really handy and uh, told us that they can take the blood for serology this afternoon so uh, it leaves us driving a little a little further on than what we were planning today about an hour but we're going to head straight there now and get blood taken for serology so fingers crossed and here's our border unmanned now because it's all part of the eurozone and here's our sign for España country number three and we've arrived outside the vets. Fingers crossed, it all goes well. Wish <laughs> us luck. We, we won't do any filming in now, but um, we're going to go in now. And uh, he's assured me by email they can sort out all the paperwork and do everything we need to here. So uh, let's hope it all goes well. Kath's going to go in and just check. I'm going to wait here with the dog. Looks like it's the right place. Let's go and get it sorted. Good girl. Come on. And that's that. She's had a titration. She was a really good girl. We've left Kath inside with the most painful bit. That's paying for it. And, uh, I'll let Kath tell you all about it when she comes out. But right now, we're really proud of her. She's a good girl. Don't you? So 179 euros 50 later and that's the blood taken for Nala's rabies serology. Um, we expected to pay about 180 euros so we couldn't have been closer really. Um, we're very glad that we didn't get serology booked in the UK because we were about to do that when the rule change came in so we would have had to pay for that twice. Um, so yeah, very glad about that. And they've also quoted us for the pet passport which we will pick up when we come back which will be a about 74.50 I think the price was um, and then they've also quoted us for the import visa but uh, as we want to meander through Spain I think we're probably going to give that a miss and then see a vet in southern Spain to get the import for taking her over to Morocco closer to the date rather than doing it now and then having to race through Spain but actually nothing will be done now because now we have to wait for the serology results so um, which take about 18 to 21 days so it's time to relax now and just wait.
great. We found a little park up, just about 10 minutes from the vet. So uh, it's time to relax a little bit now, I think. At least just take the next 24 hours to just wind down. And after a quick lap of the lake, it was back to the van for dinner and an early night. Hey, we're having a hiking kind of day today and we're going to have a day off filming. So see you soon. See you tomorrow. new location loaded uh, we've just driven up that mountain road track uh, i think road would be pushing it a bit really uh, commend commendations to stuart's amazing driving again and uh, we've pulled up at, at hermitage there's nobody around for miles and we've got perfect internet signal so it doesn't get much better than that really look at these views behind us here on the edge of the cliff almost absolutely lovely we'll be uploading all our locations at vannavigation.com so uh, if you want to keep track of our map you can do so on there but i'm adding links to all the places we've stopped and uh, oh i'm shivering it's a bit chilly up here breakfast is served and not a Ferrero Rocher in sight I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be able to hear because of the wind. But, uh, as beautiful as this place is, we're going to move on. We can't take another night in the van rocking like that. That was hard work. That was much easier. I wish we'd gone up that way last night. Park for nights had uh, come in via this village. If you ever want to come here, don't do it. And after an hour's drive on the motorway, the roads start to get narrower, the turns tighter, and eventually the roads turn to gravel. Just when you think you've gone the wrong way, you see a sign for a railway station. Take a look at these roads. We have literally driven to the end of the road, but my god, what a view. And they weren't joking about the train track. And this is where we leave you for the week. If you want to see if we make it out alive, you'll have to tune in next Sunday for our next update. Don't forget to follow us on all our other socials at Van Navigation. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.